Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday service with us here at SBSJ in Hereford. It's really great to have you joining us whenever, wherever you are watching this. Uh, we're on the second Sunday of Lent already and uh, Paul is going to be sharing with us all about uh, faith and what it means uh, and, and why it's so important that we have faith, uh, particularly as we continue to go through such challenging times. I know uh, uh, so many people who are really struggling right now, either financially or mentally or physically. Uh, it is not easy at the moment. And, uh, and what I would encourage all of you who are listening to this, if, if you are struggling, uh, please don't struggle alone. Uh, this is where we need each other. This is why the church is, the, we call it the body of Christ. It's the people, not the buildings, because we need each other, particularly when we're struggling and going through tough times. So if you're struggling, uh, I encourage you to reach out to us today and we'd love to pray with you and, uh, and just, just be that listening ear uh, that might just help you to keep going uh, through these tough times. Um, another thing that really encourages us uh, and we do in church is we sing and singing has been proven even outside of the church. They say that singing is really good for us as human beings. It lifts our spirits and our souls and that's why we sing in our services. Uh, we join together, we offer up one voice together in our praises to God. And uh, so this morning, uh, we're going to have a couple of songs. Uh, the first one is just to lift our spirits this morning. It's a great uh, version of a song called Lord, I Lift Your Name on High uh, that was recorded in Mitchell Cathedral uh, at an event I was involved in many years ago. And uh, so we're going to listen to this great band now. Uh, and then Paul is going to share with us uh, from Genesis and from uh, uh, Psalm 121. Uh, and then there'll be another song as well to help you reflect on what Paul has been saying. So I'm just going to open us in prayer and then I invite you to join and sing together this morning, wherever you are. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are a God that loves us, a God who uh, wants to care for us and not just... Help us this morning just to lift ourselves up to you, to open our eyes to you, uh, to, to just allow you to fill us with your grace and your love and your mercy. Lord, give us ears to hear what Paul is saying to us as well and hearts to respond. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. Put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on Lord, I long to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save. You came from heaven. Lift your name on high, Lord. I long to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life, and I'm so glad you came to save. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. Put your hands together. Come on, 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 put your hands together. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I long to sing your praise. So glad you're in my life. 
so glad you came to say You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. I turn to pray from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Hello. Our readings for the second Sunday in Lent are about living life as a journey of faith, uh, choosing a pathway that is directed by our faith in God. Now it's sometimes not easy to define faith because it's an abstract concept. But in the letter to the Hebrews, the writer defines faith as being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In other words, it's an inner conviction, ideally an in unshakable inner conviction. And so our first reading is about Abram in Genesis chapter 12, or from Genesis 17 onward, Abraham as he was be to become. And God sets, sends him out on a journey into the unknown. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's house, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Well, Abraham may have responded to the Lord by saying, What land is this? How far is it? How long will it take us to get there? What dangers will we face along the way? But that didn't happen because Abraham left as the Lord had directed him. Now it was a big task. It's relatively easy to be a person of faith when we're safe and secure. To be called out of safety and security is very challenging. There would have been tearful goodbyes, an unknown future, criticism. You're going off on a wild goose chase, where are you heading? What's happening? But Abram's faith motivated him, even compelled him to go. And so Abram was a man of faith on a journey of faith. But there was nothing easy about it. It wasn't an easy option. He found himself in all sorts of difficulty and facing all sorts of challenges. Our second reading today is what some biblical scholars refer to as a pilgrim psalm, Psalm 121. Again, it's about a particular journey of faith and or living the whole life of faith as a journey of faith. In a historical context, it's an account of a particular journey. The traveller is part of a caravan of camels on a journey. And he looks ahead and he says, I lift up my eyes to the hills ahead. And then he wonders what dangers lie in wait. Wild animals, bandits, heat, drought, rough mountain tracks and so on. Thinking about this journey in Psalm 121, it reminded me of a journey I and another guy used to take through the Australian outback, a distance of about 2,000 miles from Perth on the west coast to Adelaide, then on the south coast. Well, Afghan travellers first traversed this route on camels. Our mode of, mode of transport was an old banger of a truck powered by an internal combustion engine. 
and 50 years ago there were still 400 miles of dirt road, some of it like corrugated iron, other sections lots of holes and ditches. And the, the psalmist speaks about the weather. Well, for us, the sun did indeed strike us by day, more than 40 degrees Celsius, and the moon, or in our case, the cold by night. As soon as the sun dropped below the horizon, the temperature dropped like a stone, sleeping bags and blankets needed. But the psalmist on this particular journey reminds himself or herself where their help comes from. My help comes from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber or sleep. And the psalm is like an internal dialogue. The person sees the pitfalls and challenges that lie ahead, but is then reminded by faith, we will get through. Eventually our God is faithful. The internal dialogue is a form of what is called in today's secular society CBT, Clinical Behaviour Therapy. A method of keeping one on the straight and narrow psychologically and emotionally. The crucial difference being for the psalmist and the Christian today that is informed and undergirded by faith. Now these truths and convictions for the psalmist are not just in reference to a particular journey, they might be that but they are also in reference to the whole of life. It moves on from what may be the immediate journey to encompass the whole of life. This person has an awareness of faith, that there is a presence of God, living help in the whole of life that transcends any particular journey or circumstance, however hard that might be. It's a dynamic help that is primary, personal, wise, immeasurable and never-ending. It does not imply an easy life, on the contrary, but one that is well armed by faith and able to deal with any and every circumstance. In verse 7 the psalmist says, The Lord will keep you from harm. He will watch over your life. And the word he uses for life is a many-sided word. It refers to the whole living person. In other words, there is no aspect of our lives which are outside this promise. And it harks back to Psalm 23 with the assurance that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff comfort me. The psalm ends with a pledge that can hardly be stronger or more inclusive. The Lord will watch over your life, your coming and going, both now and forever. And it seems to me that we need to allow the Lord to do that to watch over our life, our coming and going, both now and forever. Whatever we might be facing today, or tomorrow, or next week, or next year, we need to allow the Lord to watch over our life, our coming and going, and live in the blessing of it. The Lord is concerned about and involved in everything in our lives, as far as we allow him to be. Well, do we allow him to be? Are we going to choose to live this day by faith? Do we choose to trust in God when things get a bit rocky? Instead of getting over-anxious or overly stressed, over-concerned about what is going to happen later today, tomorrow or next week 
or next year? Or will we remember Psalm 121 and living the truth and blessing of it? So, Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber or sleep. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And that is for us today, to live in the blessing of the promises of God by faith. Do the 
Well, thank you so much, Paul, for encouraging us with those words today. Uh, and I hope uh, those of you who have stayed watching right to the end have found our service uh, really helpful. Do leave a comment uh, if there's something particular that really struck you uh, about today's service. And as I say, if you are struggling, please don't struggle alone. Get in touch with us. We'd love to pray with you. You can contact us either through the Facebook or the YouTube channels that you're watching this on or go on our website and you'll see there's a contact us section and even a prayer uh, form that you can fill in if there's something you'd like prayer for as well. Uh, please do uh, get in touch though. Uh, we, we really don't want anyone to struggle through these times on their own. Uh, but I hope you have a great week. I hope that this service has lifted your spirits, encouraged you, and I hope that this week you can grow in your faith and in your spiritual journey as well. Take care.